I'm not entirely the little inventor in the garage anymore. I've got lots of scientists and engineers. But I would say that there is a general consensus, which I think is wrong, that the day of the individual garage inventor is over because so much technology is so advanced. Today, in the average high school biology lab, in a one-hour lab, kids might you know, do some DNA sequencing. I think we now live in a world where the most uh, valuable thing that an inventor has is imagination. And uh, the limitations are far less than they ever used to be to invent something. So I really have two, two lives. Uh, my engineers will tell you my day job, which is building medical equipment. That day job is to develop technologies for home dialysis, for drug delivery, stents, prosthetic devices, artificial organs. My day job funds my fantasies. And my fantasies include supplying clean water to the developing world. Two billion people don't have clean water, and it's the number one health uh, issue among humans on planet Earth. So we've been working for more than a decade on a project that we call Slingshot, which is a small machine that will turn any source of bad water into absolutely pure, clean, safe drinking water. And the reason we happen to internally call the project Slingshot is we all learn lessons and you hear the stories for which there's a moral. And I remember hearing the story of David and Goliath. There was this little guy, David. He had this really big problem, Goliath. And he took out that big problem because he understood technology. I think the Goliath problem for a few billion people in the 21st century is getting clean water. Two million kids die every year these days because they don't have clean water. So that little machine is the slingshot, which will allow the little Davids all over the world to take out the 21st century Goliath bad water. Our little slingshot device needs no filters, no membranes, no chemicals. We said we got to build a standalone machine that will simply be able to take any bad water, irrespective of what's polluting it, and make it clean. Without any of that stuff, if it does need one thing, a little bit of electricity. Not a lot, but a little. But we realize that there are some places in the world where there's no electricity. So we decided at the same time we were working on our slingshot, we better work on its partner, a little box that could make enough electricity to run the slingshot and maybe a little extra to give people communications, to give them access to the internet, to give them a little bit of electricity for now very efficient LED lighting so night becomes safe and productive. I think that the utility of the future will uh, be as dramatically different from the utility of today as the old model of big mainframe centralized time-shared computers are to PCs and to mobile phones. And I think you're going to see more and more power generated much closer to where it's used. The other reasons I think you'll see distributed models working more is they're more robust, they're more uh, immune to everything from natural and man-made disasters at a scale that we don't like to think about. Um, and the technologies to make them work are becoming more and more uh, real and available and cost-effective.